I've seen some people talking about things they learned during their degree and it's usually things like time management or learning to take opportunities as they come and how to manage doing lots of different things and whether those are or not true for my own experience I wanted to talk about some things that I've literally learned um, during my time as a physics student. I'm going to start by talking about relativistic electromagnetism. So electromagnetism is basically electricity and the movement of charges and you learn about this at high school at sort of a fundamental level but not about how relativity comes into it. So relativity or the special theory of relativity was one of Einstein's ideas and half of it is kind of well known and that is time dilation. So if you are moving close to the speed of light time will actually slow down for you. Now there's a second part to this and that is length contraction. So for an object moving at a high speed close to the speed of light uh, that, that the observer moving at that speed will see lengths to be shorter than sort of the true length. And this is known as length contraction or also Lorentz contraction. So if you know a little bit about electromagnetism, you know that you've got charges moving at really high speeds. And actually it kind of makes sense that relativity would come into it because you're moving near the speed of light. To think about this, imagine we have a wire with positive charges moving to the right and negative charges moving to the left. They're moving with equal and opposite speed. To an observer that's stationary next to the wire, uh, the positive and negative charges would essentially cancel each other out and there would be no net electrostatic force. If instead you are an observer looking at this wire and you're moving to the right with a very high speed, then relativity is actually going to change the situation for your point of view. So the positive charges that are moving in the same direction as you, but with a slightly higher speed than you are, they will now appear to be moving a bit slower than the negative charges which are moving to the left and sort of zooming out of frame behind you. If you consider length contraction, it will actually contract the space between these negative charges, meaning that in the wire you are observing, there will seem like there is more negative charges than there are positive leading to a net negative charge and an electric force generated by the wire affecting you, the observer. In fact, by looking at the wire this way and doing some mathematical derivations of what that electric force would be, you get an answer that's consistent with sort of the classical view of electrodynamics. And also you generate the need for magnetism and this whole idea really links together electricity, magnetism and relativity in a way where you see that all three of the ideas are really well linked together. Einstein not only worked on special relativity of time dilation and length contraction, but on a more general form which is called general relativity. And one of the key ideas behind general relativity is called the equivalence principle. Now this in essence states that an observer can't tell the difference between standing on earth under a gravitational field or being inside an accelerating box. What this is really saying is imagine you're in an elevator or a box on earth and you drop an object well, it will go down to the ground and it will accelerate at 9.8 meters per second. That's the sort of the force of gravity pulling its mass downwards. Then instead, imagine you are in the same box, but you're flying off into space and you're not 
being acted on by any gravitational forces because you're far enough away from any of the planets or other masses uh, and you drop the same object well you'll also see it go down and you'll see it go down at the rate that your spaceship is accelerating and if that rate is 9.8 meters per second you truly won't be able to tell the difference between being on earth and being in the spaceship if there were no windows on these boxes you wouldn't be able to tell the difference thinking like this means that gravity is not just a force but a distortion in space and time in free fall the laws of physics are the same as if there was no gravity at all those two ideas kind of relate to theoretical physics they're both kind of about relativity in a way and the third thing that comes to mind when I think of cool things I've learned during my degree and well there's lots of them I've just picked three that came to mind for this video uh, the third idea would be from condensed matter physics or material science and it's the idea that well there are more phases of matter than the ones you hear about every day so you know that there are solid liquid gas and plasma as sort of four fundamental states of matter but within the solid state there are multiple phases these phases relate to how the atoms are structured within the crystalline solid for example solid iron has a body centered cubic structure at a reasonably low temperature this means that the internal structure of the iron atoms can be described as like a cube with one atom in the center of the cube and the rest in the corners. Iron then becomes a face-centered cubic structure at higher temperatures, meaning that there's now an atom at the center of each of the faces. Ice has 15 known kinds of crystalline structures as a solid and the way that you can sort of change a material between these phases is by applying pressure, changing the temperature um, and you're essentially changing that internal structure. The research group that I'm currently a part of does a lot of work into this, applying huge pressures to materials to find new exotic phases and these new phases have different properties so for things like semiconductors or other areas where you want sort of to exploit the properties of materials then changing their phases and being able to manipulate this is really important to understand.